Okay, we are going to look at energy storage and energy bar charts. The first type of energy we're going to talk about is gravitational potential energy. Now, gravitational potential energy deals with gravity, of course, and gravity always deals with um, our vertical axis or a vertical displacement, which is a height. So, we call this a potential energy because it's a way you store energy. Okay, if I raise a ball up three meters, then it has the potential to fall. If it has the potential to gain kinetic energy um, through falling from some height, then it has gravitational potential energy. So, anytime we're talking about um, a height, of an object, whether it's an object being raised some height or an object starting out at a certain height and falling, either way you are either storing energy or you're using that stored energy and transferring energy or transforming energy into kinetic energy, which we'll talk about in just a second. Another energy storage is through elastic potential energy. Elastic potential energy deals with springs, rubber bands, uh, bouncy balls, anything or any object that has a property of elasticity. It can bounce, it can stretch, it can be compressed. We're going to, um, like a slingshot, think about a slingshot, you stretch um, some band, okay? That means you're storing energy in it because as soon as you let go, um, it's going to start moving. It's going to change its state. So you stored something in there to get it moving. Now, you had to do work, so you pulled and transferred energy into the band. Now that band has stored energy to be able to give the object motion. So this is another potential energy, energy being stored um, in a spring or, let's say, I want to say a rubber band, um, a ball that would maybe bounce, any of those things that have the um, ability to be stretched or compressed. And the third potential energy we're going to have is chemical potential energy. We won't deal with this one too much because we are not in chemistry. We're going to talk about your mechanical energy, but chemical energy is when you have um, chemicals reacting. You have reactions causing some motion. For example, um, a car's engine starts through the chemical reactions in the battery. And the fourth storage mechanism for energy is kinetic energy. Now in physical science, we talked about the kinetic energy of molecules. Okay, talk, we said that that was the movement of molecules. Here in physics, we talk about big things. We don't look at a um, very small scale. So it's going to be the movement of objects. If your object is moving, it has kinetic energy. Now let's talk about the, um, the way we write each one of these. Gravitational potential energy is represented E with a little g. Um, sometimes I will write it as UG. And that is just because I learned energy or potential energy as a capital U. Um, so there's no significance there. It makes, EG makes sense, but when I learned it, nothing made sense. So we had UG. I'll try to stay consistent in writing EG, though. Um, elastic potential energy is written as EEL. Okay, the EL here meaning elastic, or ES as in the elastic potential energy in a spring, particularly, or 
I like to write it as us. Again, the u is just potential energy. That's how I learned it. I'll try to be consistent using e, e, l, or e, s. Chemical energy is e, c, h. Makes sense. Um, in physical science, remember we had thermal energy and phase change energy, so we used ETH and EPH. And finally, for kinetic energy, that is EK, or sometimes just a capital K, because that's how I learned it. So, pretty simple um, notations here. Now, there is a special type of energy um, that is untransferable. And what I mean is, lots of times when you have an object moving, um, you have the random kinetic energy of the actual molecules. Now, um, this, these molecules within the system start moving faster and faster. Um, they can build up heat, okay? And um, when energy is untransferable, that means your molecules have built up a lot of heat or we've lost energy in sound. And that just means that it can't be used again. Untransferable energy has been transferred completely out of our system. It can't be used anymore. That being said, um, one force that's going to produce a lot of unusable energy is the force of friction. Okay, the force of friction tends to slow things down and cause things to, hit up, to heat up. So we call that, um, along with any other unusable energy, is energy that has just been dissipated. I don't, don't want you to get in the habit of saying lost energy. It's just an amount of internal energy based on the molecules inside of your object heating up. Okay, um, So we're just going to call it dissipated energy or it's unusable energy, but it's still there. The energy did not go anywhere or we didn't necessarily lose it. It was just dissipated. It was kicked out of our system. Now, um, when energy is dissipated, it's transferred, and we've discussed transfer of energy as work. So we know that dissipated energy due to friction would be the force of friction times delta x because work is force times distance, and um, when energy is dissipated, again, that is working. Um, now the next thing we wanna, I want to talk about is energy conservation. That means that if we start with an initial amount of energy, I want to say EI for initial, um, we're going to add some work or take away some work from our system. We're going to add energy or take away energy from our system, and that transfer we defined as work. That has to equal the final amount of energy that we have in our system, and that's energy conservation or the first law of thermodynamics. Okay, now I know that is a um, mouthful, but all you need to know is that the first law of thermodynamics is energy conservation. Energy can't just be created or destroyed. Um, now, the second law of thermodynamics deals with our force of friction here. Once energy is gone, so once energy has been dissipated through friction or um, other molecular internal energy transfers, then it can't, it's no longer useful. So once you have energy dissipated, it can be transferred back to useful energy. For example, if a car skids to a stop, okay, friction stopped it, uh, you can't reverse that process. So it can't be transferred back to useful energy. Now, 
we can get into what um, we're going to call in here energy pie charts. Now, a pie chart it represents parts of a whole. Okay, um, we can say we have fifty um, percent of our class is girls, while another fifty percent is boys. Now, that's not accurate for our class necessarily, um, but that's just an example. Um, if you're talking about a budget, a lot of apps now, if you're trying to handle your money, like to use pie charts to show you where you spend most of your money. So mine would look, I spend a big chunk of money on my mortgage. Um, another pretty big chunk goes into food for the month. Big family, lots of mouths to feed. Um, we have other bills, so our entertainment um, you know, TV, internet, um, electricity, utilities, um, that's a big chunk of money. Um, your charities, so, you know, whether you're given to a church or some, some other form of giving, that's going to contribute part of your, part of the whole amount of money that you have. And then, you know, generally by the end of the month, I have a tiny bit going into savings, and this leftover um, gets me through doctor's appointment and clothes for my kids, um, field trips, all the other miscellaneous things that tend to come up. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to look at different systems and draw pie charts for those systems. Talk about well, what type of energy does the system have? How is the energy being transformed? So let's look at a couple examples. Our first example is a kid moving down a slide. So here's our happy kid. Now they start at a height. So I know if we're starting at a height and we're not moving at this point, I have all potential energy and all gravitational potential energy. Let's say we get right here. Here I have about half the height, so half of my pi becomes EG. Now I've also started to speed up, so um, I'm moving pretty fast at that point. So I would say a big chunk of that is EK. And, you know, those old metal slots that you have in, like, elementary school and stuff, they start to heat up a little bit. So that's, um, we have some internal energy that can't be used anymore. So that is our dissipated energy. And then, finally, let's talk about here. We're at the bottom of our slide. We are moving very fast. Um, so that initial gravitational potential energy has now been converted to we have mostly kinetic at the bottom and because there's friction because um, you're heating up a little bit we even lost or even more energy was transferred out of our system so that became dissipated energy so I started with 100% gravitational potential energy and I ended with mostly um, kinetic energy and some energy lost. So that's how we're going to be looking at pie charts uh, coming up soon, the different types of energy that we have. Um, see if you can do a couple of these examples. I want you to think about the energy involved in a car skidding to a stop. Um, a single water molecule falling in a water, uh, waterfall, um, a spring that is shooting a pinball, and um, rocket shoes. You are flying down or in the future and you have rocket shoes speeding you up. Okay, that's all I have on energy bar charts. Um, the answers are going to show up in just a second. Um, see you in class. And here are the answers for 
those four examples, you can try to figure those out. Look at how your energy is being transformed, different entities.